No, 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 it's an extension of the football. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fine, but for me as a Christian, it's been a Anyway, sorry. There was, uh, what do Christians believe about Mary Magdalene? Uh, she's a follower of Christ who was delivered. She, she was a demon possessed woman who Christ delivered from, so seven demons. I think it was seven demons. So she, yeah, that she was a follower of Christ. That she was the first disciple to witness the resurrection. The resurrected Christ. She went to. I, I really am inspired by Mary Magdalene actually because when the disciples were petrified because Jesus had been crucified, so they were hiding. She went with some other women to the tomb to anoint the body of Christ. And when she arrived, she found the tombstone had been rolled aside, and there was an angel there who said, "Why are you looking for the living among the dead?" And, so, and then, and then the resurrected Christ appeared to her and um, said, "Go and tell my disciples." And yeah, so she was a very significant disciple. So yeah, I thought because some Christians they talk about relationships, like oh yeah, no, I, I mean that's not in the scripture or anything. I, yeah. In the scripture, she's a follower of Christ, someone who Christ has set free from demonic forces, and then she, yeah, she was the first to witness his resurrection, which is pretty special. So yeah, she's a bit of an inspiration to me, Mary Magdalene. But just purely as a follower of Christ, like yeah. women follow Jesus and men follow Jesus. So, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know about her being Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I don't, I don't, yeah, I couldn't believe that. So yeah, um, well it was nice meeting you. I think this is yeah, same. This will be Thanks a good. Thanks so much for your no, time. No, my I pleasure. I that you're quite well known. <laughs> I guess so. I guess What's so. your name? My name is Zishan. So, Zishan. Zishan with a Z. Z. Yeah. Zishan. So you'll be on YouTube and all of that, won't you? Yeah. Cool. Zishan. I'm going to have to look you up later now for a minute, but I really, I can't tell you, I so appreciate the fact that you time to talk to me. No, my pleasure. Yeah. This is why we're here. Yeah. And like I mentioned at the beginning, to remove those misconceptions, yeah. build those bridges. Oh, I guess. No, no, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> um, would your goal be to convert me to Islam or convert any Christian to Islam? Or is that not really your goal? I think there's only two main religions that are missionary religions, Christianity and Islam. Yeah. And both of them, the goal ultimately is that salvation lies in following and adhering the faith. So yeah, for us, the ultimate goal is that a person, like she's saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so she's going to start insulting the prophet in a minute as well. Yeah. Well, she comes every week. I think she gets paid. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, you know the So the, we believe he is the best example that I sent for us. Yeah. He was a, a, he was married to a nine-year-old. Yeah. Uh, so in those days, no, no, no. In those days, consummation of marriage with a with a with somebody that was young was normal. It was acceptable in society because those girls would mature sooner. In fact, the three criteria in Islam, which people don't mention, is you can only get married and consummate with somebody if they're physically ready, if they're mentally ready, and if it's socially acceptable. These are the three criteria. If any one of these three criteria is not there, then you, you can't do so. That's why even amongst biblical teachings, Mary was 12, Joseph was much, much older, and the argument is made, of course, of God impregnating Mary at such an early age as well. And that's why people don't really have much issue with that. They have an issue with co uh, copulating with a child, which is incredibly loud, uh, copulating with somebody that is not mature physically or mentally. In Islam, if somebody is not physically or mentally ready, it's not allowed. However, in those days it was socially acceptable as well. Even in the Bible, Rebecca, she was married, she was married when she was three. Uh, in the Manusmithi of the Hindus, 
again, you marry when you're young, because in those days, life expectancy was quite low as well, and there was no such thing as childhood. So when a child reached a certain age, then they would be married, because for them to stay at home, they would just be wasting resources. And that's why they would have many children, etc. So there's, you see, now the insults have started. She's just looking for reactions, and that's why it's good people aren't giving her the reactions. But that's why I think it's important to bring a counter narrative. But then, when individuals like this come and dilute our message that we're trying to come with, it doesn't help the situation, especially like he hasn't ever debated with her. He hasn't ever spoken to her and go against her. And he'll come up with some excuse that, oh no, I'm not this or I'm not that. You have to be a human being to go to somebody and they're insulting. Like, for somebody to insult Christ and Islam is forbidden. He's a prophet of God. You can't, for, you can't. To reject Christ, to reject Jesus, you relinquish yourself on the faith. So it's, I guess that's the way it is when it comes to these things. Like the Quran says, come to common terms between us and you. We worship none but Allah and the likes. So again, the Quran invites us to come to common terms. Look at the similarities. The differences will always be there. And with the differences, the most you can do is have a debate, have a discussion. Like have, the issue should be with the point being made, not the person. What we do so yeah do you, do you have like a job that you guys do tomorrow morning you know is this what you do all the time to be honest i um i used to work in retail then i was a primary school teacher for six Where years yeah. best and job in the world yeah and i think it equips you to kind of deal with people as Definitely. well break down concepts yeah. walk them through it yeah and it gives instance patience within you as well yeah yeah, I definitely learned a lot being a primary school teacher. I taught year three, I did it for five years. Year three. I loved it so much. Because you know in year three, they're just, they're old enough to tie their shoelaces and get changed from PE, but they're a bit young, they haven't developed that attitude yet. Yeah, oh, I yeah, loved yeah. it so much. Um, but I think, yeah, after I, I think year five is the cut-off period. A bit tougher, yeah. Year yeah, five, I was a year five teacher. Yeah. I loved it as in well. In South London. In South London. Yeah. And then when you go to year six, that's when the changes yeah. start happening. Yeah, they grow up, don't they? Yeah. And then when those changes happen, then again, you're having yeah. to manoeuvre that. You're having to, hit, you know, give them the syllabus as well as dealing with that. Yeah. With the hormonal changes as well. No, I love being a teacher. Yeah, so after being a teacher, what did you do after that? So after being a teacher, now I'm a full-time YouTuber. Oh, is that what you do full-time? Yeah. So on my YouTube channel, it's called Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. Jannah, yeah. J-A-N-N-A-H. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that just means Smile to Paradise. So this discussion will probably go on Smile to Jannah Extra. But on Smile to Jannah, I talk about political and social issues. Yeah, this, this discussion is probably quite boring, isn't it? Just two people like... You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Uh, people nowadays, they're very thirsty. And with podcasts and stuff like that, they just stick it on in the car or in the gym and they just play. And you'd be surprised seeing two people with different beliefs, share those beliefs, talk. It's actually quite empowering to a lot of people watching. Like they like that. You'll be surprised with the comments that you see. There'll be some comments about him, but, <laughs> but um, with somebody that's genuinely come to learn, um, yeah, people appreciate that. Actually. I bought a New Testament, yeah. I, I actually, like the issue I had with the New Testaments was I couldn't highlight because it would bleed through the pages. So I had to get an old, um, there's like an old, I think 19 something Nelson version. I think the Nelsons have one edition that if you highlight, it doesn't bleed onto the next page. So yeah, I bought one for I think 60 pounds. written by Luke, yeah? Yeah, so he wrote Luke and then it, it flows. If you put Luke and Acts next together, they flow seamlessly. So mm. there's a story of Christ, 
Jesus and then the story of the early church and uh, the evangelization of, of Jerusalem, Damascus, Antioch, what is now Turkey. So I'm sure you've heard of Paul, the Apostle Paul. Yeah, so it's his, it's his testimony how he converted to Christ from Judaism. And, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely read that. Do you have a yeah. copy of the Quran? Would you like one? Yeah, no, I have one. Yeah, I got one from them. Um, I go to Whitechapel and I got one from uh, Whitechapel. They hand out copies of the Quran. So, yeah, okay. yeah I got one. And then I've read, so I've read all the verses in the Quran about Jesus. And yeah, I'm just like slowly going through it, you know, and trying to, yeah, so I can be, so I can be more equipped to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. You need to have, you need to have some knowledge to be able to talk about it. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I'm reading it. Yeah, it's very, very different from the Bible because the Bible is full of narrative and um, full of story. And you know, there's so many types of um, writings in the Bible, you know, poetry, narrative, um, and the Quran is much more, yeah, it's like, um, it's much simpler. It's just command, isn't it? I think yeah. if you read the first chapter, which is Surah Baqarah, yeah, it is. But if you go towards... Um, you progress from the first third to the second third, that's when it becomes a bit more detailed. Yeah. Um, sorry, that's when it, it moves on from the uh, laws, more about paradise, hereafter. It talks about the story of Moses, yeah. Jesus, like... Jesus and the birds, that he flew. Yeah, we believe he yeah. would um, yeah, breathe. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, we also believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. Yeah. We believe in the chapter, it's called Surah Maida, which means the table from heaven that he prayed and his disciples prayed for food and a table with food came from heaven. That's why, I don't know if you remember, in the opening ceremony of the French Olympic, the Christians were upset with the way Jesus was apparently depicted, so were Muslims, because we're like, this is uh, cognizant of Surah Ma'idah as well, like, the table. So, yeah, we don't tolerate, uh, in fact, we're actually very surprised about some of the insults that Christians are okay when it comes to Jesus. And that's why Muslims have become more vocal now when, it, when Jesus gets insulted. Like, I don't know if you know, there are certain Christians, one such Christian is eating the Quran and spitting it out, but a Muslim with the Bible wouldn't be seen doing that. Like there was a burn Quran day, but then when it came time to burn the Torah, the Old Testament, the Muslim didn't do it. Like the Bible, if somebody was desecrating the Bible here, you would see Muslims going and stopping him fast, abusing Jesus. But as you're obviously going around, you'll see what sort of stuff she's saying. And you'll see like the guy that was here, he's very friendly towards Christians. Um, he won't be correcting her. Fellow Christians won't be correcting her. She's just waiting for, because it's a tourist hotspot, people to come and just be caught off guard and just to lunge or something or react in a certain way, boom. Her funding increases, her visa gets extended here, and uh, that's what it is. Some people will do anything for a longer visa. You know? But yeah, pleasure meeting you. Take care, have a, have a look around as well. What is it, Tijana? So smile. smile. Yeah. Just remember my smile. And then say, where was he smiling to? To paradise. Yeah. I've got the New Testament. I probably need an Old Testament um, with, with a similar thing that wouldn't bleed through. Yeah. Because I like to read and, you know, make notes. And... What was your name? Katie, nice to meet you, Katie. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of a lot of commonalities. And yeah. Take it easy, take it easy, take it. Bye. Uh Abdul Karim. Come on. How was it? That was alright, but it's just um It's a joke, isn't it? Ooh, that, that first one, the big nose. Yeah. Yeah, he had nothing to offer. You see? Yeah, nothing to offer. Are you hungry? No, no, yeah. We're we'll staying for a few hours. Alhamdulillah, how are you? I have to look at you. Like this, you know? Yeah, calm down a little bit. Yes. <laughs>
Someone is going to do something.